morning, Rochester LC, and welcome to C103 News. I am Apollinar. And I'm Tay. We have a lot of news to bring you today, so let's get to it. Now that it's starting to get warmer out, you might be interested in cutting your long hair for the summer. Maybe if you could do it for free, you'll even be more interested. There's an opportunity coming up to get a free haircut and do something good with it in the progress. Listen up for more information. Hi, I'm Lexi, and for my passion project, we're having a hair donation at our school on May 25th. All the hair is going to children with a hair loss that lose their hair due to medical conditions, and your hair has to be eight inches long. And if you sign up and you really want, and you're really serious about it, just come and get a permission slip from me. Thank you, Lexi. Make sure to sign up on any of the sign-up sheets around the building. See Lexi if you have any questions about hair donation. Now here's a man in charge, Mr. Zebra, with this week's C60. Welcome to another version of Z60. Today's topic, finishing the school year strong. It's May, it's beautiful. The weather's starting to get nice. It's being difficult to concentrate and stay focused, but we have got to maintain our academic um, priorities as we finish the school year. There's lots of people gonna be graduating this spring and we hope that they all get across that finish line and they don't have to come back and make stuff up in the summertime. So I'm asking you to put on the academic focus blinders and finish the school year strong. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Zebar. Make sure you give it your all these last three weeks to end the year strong. Are you interested in going to a carnival on May 27th? Here's Lexi, John, and Apollinar with information on how you can get involved with this year's RALC Carnival. Have you guys seen the posters about the carnival on Friday, May 27th? Do you ever wonder what it's for? Stay tuned for all the information about that fun day. Hey, I'm here with Ms. Rojas. Hey, Ms. Rojas. Hi, Lexi. So what's the carnival for? The carnival is the main fundraiser for the We Day organization that we, that we do here at our school. And all the money will be going towards the food and agricultural um, necessities for the country of Tanzania. Okay, can you explain the tickets to us, like how we do it? The tickets. Um, there'll be a couple different options for tickets. You can buy um, an all-day pass, which is actually for the two-hour time period that we have the carnival going. Um, you can buy you can buy a ticket that will be the all-day pass. It'll be ten dollars, and then the other activities are anywhere from three tickets up to five tickets. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. Hi, I'm here with the Katie today. Hi. Hi. Which activities are you doing? Um, so for the carnival on Friday. I'm going to be doing the sidewalk, chocolate sidewalk, and basketball in the gym. So how many tickets do you need for those activities? Well, for the chocolate sidewalk, it's going to be three tickets, and for basketball, it's going to be five. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Shari today. Hi, Shari. Hi. So what activities are you doing? I'm doing a sport and basically like the main sport and then I'm going to Alright, how many tickets is that? Three tickets. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm here with Kat. So, Kat, Hi. what activity are you doing at the carnival? Cupcake walk. What is the cupcake walk? We technically, it starts at 12.30 to 3 o'clock, and you walk around, and I guess it's a game, and you get to, like, whoever wins gets a cupcake. So, how many tickets is it? Three. Three tickets? Mm -hmm. Sounds Remember, it's going to be $1 yeah. for five tickets, or $10 for an all-day pass. Hope to see you there on May 27th. Thank you, news crew, for that valuable information. Remember, all proceeds go to Weed Day. Make sure you buy your ticket. It's five tickets for one dollar. Hey, Tay. Yeah, Paul and I. What are some of your best memories here at the ALC? I don't know, man, but there sure have been a lot of good ones. Well, let's hear from some of our seniors and see what memories they have to share. We have a lot of seniors graduating this year. Today we'll hear from our seniors and see what they're so up I'm to. So I'm here with Precious today. So Precious, what are your, some of your favorite memories here at ALC? Some of my favorite memories are meeting the teachers and my friends that I talk to here. Okay. <laughs> what advice do you have to give to the next year's seniors? Um, go to school and do your work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what motivated you to push you through the senior year? Um, they told me I wouldn't graduate on time if I didn't come back to school, so right. that's why I came back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all caught back up now? 
Almost. Good, good. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming in today. So I, I'm here with Harley. So Harley, what are, what are some of your best memories here at ALC? Um, getting to know all the teachers and the staff, I guess. All right. Uh, what advice would you give to the next year's seniors? Um, don't smoke weed and, I guess, keep on the uh, good side of all the teachers. Okay. Um, what, what motivated you to do this year to push through your senior year? Uh, I want to graduate so that way I can go to college. That's a fair reason. All right, thank you, Harley. So I'm here with Tanisha today. So Tanisha, what are your best memories at AOC? My best memory is, is club days. I like being in the club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What advice would you give the next year's seniors? Next year seniors come to freaking school. <laughs> that is school. <laughs> okay. What motivated you to push you through your senior year? Graduating. Graduating? Sounds simple enough. All right, thank you. <laughs> push the button more. So I'm here with Ben today. So Ben, uh, what are your best memories at ALC? Um, probably the football and the dodgeball. Okay, and you played in those, correct? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. What advice do you have to give to the next year's seniors? Um, stick it out. Stick it out, okay. Not much longer. <laughs> All right. What motivated you to push you through your senior year? Um, probably health science careers. Health science like careers? Like, me the confidence to do it. All right. Thank you, Ben. So I'm here with Katie today. So Katie, what are your best memories at ALC? My best memory here at ALC was when I was in fifth hour and we were having a conversation about something completely off topic but it was a good time. Okay, um, what advice do you have to give for next year's seniors? My advice for next year's seniors is to work hard, stay on top of things, and good, get good grades. Okay, and what motivated you to push through your senior year? Um, the fact that I need to graduate so I can become a social worker or special, edu special education teacher. Okay, that sounds good, thank you. Yep. So it seems that our seniors had some good memories to share. Not only that, but also some advice for next year's seniors. Thanks guys, now to a serious matter. What would you do if you saw someone getting attacked or you yourself got attacked? I don't know, Apollinar, but I think I would jump in to help. We here are some tips on what to do if you or someone you know is getting jumped. Due to recent events in the public, we are here to give you tips on how to protect yourself. Good morning, Rochester to ALC. I'm here with Carlise today. Hello. So, Carlise, how would you avoid a dangerous situation? Um, just trying to communicate in a, in a way to, to get the person to understand that what they're doing is totally out of question. Like, if you're, if you're robbing somebody to make them realize that it's going to end up bad for them and try to calm them down as much as possible and try to situate it. And what would you do if you were in a bad situation? Um, I would do everything possible to avoid physical contact, anything that has to do with fighting or anything like that. But if it had to come down to it, then I would defend myself. Mm, okay. And have you ever needed to use these moves? Um, Since you said you've been practicing two years for boxing. Um, Not necessarily. I mean, there's only rare occasions where I would definitely have to use it. And it really doesn't last long. It's not a, a whole long confrontation. So. Well, thank you for your time, Curly's. No problem. Hi, I'm here with Miss P. Um, have you ever been robbed? Um, my house has been, but I personally have not been. And what did you do when you saw that? Um, at first, we called the police and had them come in to investigate the situation. And then uh, ultimately, we never found out who did it, but because of our insurance, we were able to get our possession or get new possessions back. Right on. Uh, have you been in a dangerous situation? I personally haven't been, no. Alright, um, what would you do if you ever got into one? Um, with the background that I have, the big goal is to de-escalate the situation. You don't ever want to attack the person, so you don't want to go after them and start swinging at them and fighting them, because all that's going to do is increase the tension between the other person and continue the fight. So you want to try to take away any weapons that they may have um, wanting to de-escalate the situation and try to take away the power from the person that is attacking you. Uh, so you really want to try to get some kind of martial arts training or some kind of self-defense training 
so that you can learn how to de-escalate the situation. And you have those trainings? Yes, I do. That's good. All right, well, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Tabante. I'm here with Mrs. Molly. How are you doing today, Mrs. Molly? Good, thank you. I'm just going to ask you a few questions. What would you do if you were in a bad situation? Um, I think an important thing to do is to try to look around and try to keep yourself kind of in the middle, mm -hmm. not along some edge somewhere. And your voice is a very powerful way to help protect yourself. Yeah. How would you avoid a dangerous situation? Well, um, some of the best teachers that I've had for self-defense have said that you want to like make your eyes moving all the time. And if you think somebody is trying to get too close to you, look right at them mm -hmm. and let them know that you see them and also try to move yourself as much as possible away from people like that. Um, awareness is your best defense, and so before you get into a dangerous situation, be aware of it and just try to stay out of it. Always like keep your eyes open. Yes, don't, don't be uh, absent-mindedly or like on your phone walking mm -hmm. into a situation where you're gonna be trapped somewhere, but yeah. be alert all the time. Have you ever needed to use your self-defense moves? Luckily, I have not, no. All of my training has been training instead of actually having to I apply. think that's for the better. That's for the better, yeah. <laughs> but thank you, Miss Molly. Yes. So now that you know how to defend yourself, you can protect yourself in a dangerous situation. Thanks, guys, for very, very important information. Before we wrap things up for this week, here's some information on a yearbook and an AOC t-shirt. <laughs> you see that, bro? Hey, he told you to get a yearbook. There's only 30 left. They're $25. Go get one now. And I told y'all to go get a t-shirt. You think I'm playing with y'all? It's only $15. Go get one right now. See Mrs. Becky with any questions or if you're interested in buying a shirt or yearbook. Well, that does it for this week's C103 News. I'm AP on the streets. Look out for me. And I'm two times, and we're signing off. Peace.